Hi, this is Hugh Perkins, and I want to talk about bat propagation. <clears throat> so, I'm not really sure how to position this presentation, because it's not really about autocrad. I mean, there's about, like, two minutes of autocrad. Uh, it's mostly about maths, of bat propagation. Uh, so, I'm not really sure who is the target audience or any of these things, but I um, spent the entire of yesterday, like, writing this. So, anyway... Uh, I've already recorded this once, and then I discovered the microphone hadn't recorded any sound, which was completely uh, frustrating. Uh, but so I, anyway, I am uh, trying again. So hopefully, it's going to work better this time. Right. So the idea is, so in the last couple of autograd things, I well, in the last autograd presentation, I compared what we were getting from autograd bat prop with what if we uh, did the derivation ourselves. And uh, I wanted to take, and, and I did like a, a huge approximation there in that the uh, like RNN didn't actually have any inputs of each time step uh, or any outputs but um, that we were training on, but that's, that's okay because uh, you can simply train on the final embedding bit, right? But uh, I didn't have inputs at each stage. So I kind of wanted to go through the maths of uh, it, what if there are inputs at each stage. Uh, so I'm still going to make approximations like we're not going to do actual matrix multiplication. We're just going to do like Hadamard per element multiplication. Um, but uh, we are going to add in an input at each stage. Uh, this makes it like really mathematical, or kind of mathematical, or a little bit. At least it needs like chain rule and stuff. Uh, and it takes quite a little while to work through it. It has like zero to do with autograd or PyTorch. So if you're looking for PyTorch or autograd things, you can um, try a different tutorial. Uh, but if you're interested in how that part works, uh, this might be useful. Uh, so it's kind of complicated. So I decided to make a little diagram, which is which is here. Um, so so in this version, apparently my photo bit gets in the way. So let's kind of move this slightly, uh, maybe like that oh, up here. All right, so I'm not really looking towards the camera because I'm looking here, right, and the camera is up the top here. So this is kind of an approximation of, uh, of an RNM. Uh, these things I'm calling layers, they're not really layers, they're, it's, uh, oops, it's, um, moved. Uh, they're, they're time steps. Okay, so uh, in an RNM, we're basically going to have, well, in our very simple RNM, we've basically got a single layer. Uh, with a single set of weights, uh, but we have multiple time steps. So if we take one time step, which is this one in the middle, you've got an input comes in, the output from the previous, oh, I see, uh, the output from the previous time step, oh, here we are, the input comes in, the output from the previous time step comes in, and we do a little tiny little calculation based on the weights, and the output from the previous time step and the input from this time step and that gives us the output from that time step. All right, and then we feed that to the next time step which is just the same weights. Uh, it's going to have a new input. Uh, the output is the output from a different time step so that's going to give another different output. So it's basically the same layer over and over again. And then the interesting thing is like in autograd and so on, can we just reuse this W? So we can. Uh, and, and we're not going to like really prove it much beyond saying that we can here. This is, the rest of this is going to be like mathy kind of differential stuff. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate all of this basically by hand without using Autocrad or... I mean, we're going to use PyTorch, but we're not going to use Autocrad. Uh, simply so that we can see what's involved. Uh, okay, so here's our formula. So we've got out t is out t minus 1 plus input c times w. All right, so what's various approximations here? We don't have an activation. We don't have any tanhauer or sigmoid or anything like that. We don't have a bias, but that's fine. Uh, this is per element Hadamard. It's not matrix multiplication. I mean, you can't tell that from this sign, but we are going to do per element because it's just easier. Um, we're just going to have a single feature for everything. So we've got a single feature for the out, a single, um, a single scalar in the in the weight, of one single weight, I mean, uh, a single feature in the input, everything is just going to be one single feature, so that just makes it kind of uh, easier. But I mean, basically, the, the principles for, uh, if we can do it for one element, we can do it for a million elements, and uh, like matrix multiplication is, uh, well, uh, matrix multiplication is harder, but it's, it's um, mathematically similar. 
Oh, okay, so that's this bit. Right, so I guess we've got enough from this diagram to at least go through and calculate some outputs. So we're going to create some Python code that take, creates some inputs, creates uh, some random shared weight, and then calculates the outputs. We don't need to do any additional maths in order to do that. We've got our formula here, so let's do that now. So, uh, so let's say we create like um, uh, RNN1. Uh, if that doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. Cool. Uh, oh, this path here, like a lot of this stuff, sooner or later, I um, save up to a repository, uh, which is, uh, oh, you don't want all of those. Uh, that one. Yeah. So, oh, well, actually, it won't be that. It will be like uh, this, right? All right, and then I uh, like, uh, so this is actually a symbolic link. Um, mm, mm. Oh, that's not helpful. Um, but anyway, uh, so basically, uh, this is like the folder uh, pi slash pytorch inside this repository. And uh, so sooner or later, a lot of this stuff ends up there. Right, so let's do... Uh, import torch and we're going to do the get the autograd and let's just get like uh, numpy and math just in case we need it. Uh, we do need numpy actually. Right and then what we're going to so let's set up a manual seed so that we always get the same numbers out just because that makes our life easier. Uh, right so what do we need? We need inputs and we need weights. All right, so let's create a weight. So and let's do everything as a variable, basically. Uh, so torch, uh, no, autograd.variable. Um, we're going to create that as a random, and it's just going to have a single element, right? And um, we need bat prop. So it requires grad equal true. All right, and then what else do we need? We need the input. So let's create. Uh, so also we need to know how many time steps. So we're going to call the number of time steps uh, set length. Yes, and let's say three. All right, so let's just create uh, an empty array of inputs. So that's just going to create an array of nuns. Uh, all right, and then we're going to create some inputs. So for t in range set length, and then we're just going to create uh, each input. Uh, so again, well, let's use variables for everything. So autograd.variable, torch.rand1, and let's say we get we want that prop. Uh, we don't actually need it, but let's say that we do. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so let's print this out. So, oh, we didn't calculate the output yet, but let's print what we've got. So w, uh, okay, so w is a variable, uh, and if we print that out, it's going to print like on multiple lines, even though it's just one value. Uh, so let's just do like dot data zero, then it's just going to print our scalar. Uh, and let's just show that. So if I do Python, what was it? It was uh, RNM1, uh, invalid syntax, yep. So this should be a colon. Cool. All right, so we printed out our W, and since we've got manual seed, it's always, it's always going to be the same, 0 0.696. Uh, all right, and we can also print out the inputs. And again, because it's kind of a variable, we're, just, we're going to like do input.data0 for data, in, no, for input in input. So that's just going to like print it all on one line. Uh, so we've got a set line equal three, so we should have three inputs, one for each time. Cool, three inputs, and they're all different. And if we run again, it's going to have the same numbers because we've got the manual seed. Uh, cool, right, and then we're going to calculate the outputs. So uh, let's move this up here. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, scroll down a bit. 
All right, let's calculate the outputs. So for the outputs, we're going to also do like outputs equal none for uh, t in range uh, setlem. And then we're going to calculate the outputs. Uh, right, now uh, some boundary condition stuff. Um, so let's create a, uh, a uh, Jupyter notebook. Um, let's call this, I don't know that. Or something. Uh, okay, so. Um, so we kind of got some boundary cases, boundary conditions or edge cases. Okay, so. Um, T is an element of zero up to sec len minus one. Okay. So if sec len is three, well, T is going to be zero, one, or two. Uh, we're also going to define for the simpl for simplify some of the notation later, we're going to define big T equal sec len minus one. This is just going to simplify some of the notation later. Okay, so that means that we can also express this T bit as uh, from zero up to big T. Okay. So if sec len is three, t big T will be two. Um, yeah, so it's zero based uh, corresponding to Python. Right now, let's think about this. So we're going to, for, for each of these values of T, uh, we have an input, and I'm gonna write it kind of, uh, Python notation. So right, rather than using like input underscore t or whatever, I'm going to put or whatever the thing is. Uh, I'm just going to write it as like kind of an array. Uh, but this is kind of like Python notation. So uh, there we go. So we have an input for all of these t from zero up to seclem minus one, and we have we calculate an output. T. All right. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's our formula, right? Our formula is the output for time t is the output from the previous time step plus the input from this time step times W. All right, now remember, this is not like a standard RNA formula. It's highly simplified, but it, it does like show how the chain rule and backpot works. I mean, we haven't got to that bit, but. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem is T here goes, starts from zero. So that means we need output from minus one, which we don't have. So uh, we're going to define I'm going to define the output minus one. Let's put t equal minus whoops. T equal minus one is zero. All right, we need that. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have issues later, like now, actually. All right, so uh, the output from t minus one is zero, and we're going to in the Python code we're going to have like an if code to handle that. All right, so uh, we've got four t in range. Seclen, so that's going from zero up to seclen minus one. Then we've got output t equal outputs t minus one plus input t input t times w. All right. Now that's going to fail because when t is zero, this doesn't exist. All right. So let's do it like this. Let's say Prev output equal. I'm just going to create an all all uh, all zeros, right? Uh, create an all zeros value 
uh, by default, and then we'll overwrite that when t is more than zero. Okay, so this is going to be torch dot zeros, and this is one of them. And then if t is more than zero, then prev output uh, equal output t minus one. Okay, and let's say this needs gradient. Why not? Uh, okay, so here we're just going to replace the output t minus one with prev output. Okay, and then that should run. So let's just check that runs. It runs, uh, and then let's print the outputs. So the same as for like the inputs, we're just going to like loop over it, grab the tensor from the variable, and print the first and only value, so that it all prints out in a nice line. Okay, so we should have three outputs. Ah, oh, we do. So good. All right, and because of the manual, we get the same output each time. Cool. So we forwarded through the network. 